Hey Buns, so today I wanted to talk about something that's often just accepted as a matter of fact, and that is how Final Fantasy XIV has a reputation for a great community. Now, I don't want the vibe of this video to be like smug and self-congratulatory, like, why are we so great? <laughs> because we're not all great. There's definitely plenty of toxic buttholes. I mean, just play long enough and you will meet with some. So even if they are not the majority, I think that by constantly getting pushed out of every other well-moderated space, they retreat into this nasty fringe that is hyper-toxic. So before we get into the meat of this video, which is really, why are people nice? Um, I don't want to gloss over the bad. Apart from those who are naturally unpleasant, there are also people that are not toxic people, but they might have said a toxic thing here and there. And that's just because they lack uh, self-control. Maybe they were short on time and it was Monday night and they kept wiping to enrage and they were doing fine, but everybody else kept making mistakes and they just snapped. Or maybe they're the one that's screwing up and they don't want to take responsibility for it for whatever reason. You know, like we have all been tilted before, uh, but some people just lack the self-discipline or the maturity to step away instead of explode on others. And they might even regret it later. And hopefully that regret would lead them to improving their behavior. But I mean, that's a thing that is gonna happen no, like in any game, I'm sure. I think that because outright aggression is so discouraged and frowned upon by the community at large, that a lot of times people take their nastiness and they become really passive aggressive instead. So they'll never say what's really bothering them. They will mask their resentment with a smile. They will complain to everybody else except the person that they are complaining about. They'll say, what are you mad about? Why are you upset? You know, I'm not mad. I was just kidding. It's always hints and hints, never, di never directly because they lack, for whatever reason, the courage or the will to say, to, to, to resolve disputes in a in a normal way i don't know i don't know why people are like this i mean we've all been there and that's i think that's something that flies under the radar a lot of times i think that the past when you meet somebody that's passive aggressive you might not know right away because a lot of it is not translating real well into text because if you if someone's like it's fine and you hear their tone of their voice in public, you're like, oh, okay, well, it's clearly not fine. But if you just read, <laughs> if you just read, it's fine. You're like, okay, cool. I guess, I guess it's fine. It's fine then. Uh, honestly, <laughs> I think I would rather have somebody just yell at me than do this passive aggressive BS. Anyway, all that exists. And it would be wrong of me to make a video where I'm talking about the goodness of the community and like digging into the reasons for that without acknowledging the bad, because the bad is real, it's there, and I don't want to minimize the experience of anybody who's encountered somebody like that. And I just hope that uh, you will give it another try, because by and large, people are actually super chill and friendly. And that's one of the reasons why I love this game, and I love you guys, but everywhere I look, people go out of their way to help, to teach, to be patient, like incredibly patient. And it's just like, like, I don't want to sound cynical, but like, why? Why are people doing that? Is there something in the game that drives this like wild altruism that I see? Or is it just that nice people are drawn to 14 in general? I came from the WoW community. Uh, I played WoW from 2004 uh, up until Warlords of Draenor. And by comparison, Retail WoW is a game with a reputation for having not the best community to put it lightly like a lot of people like to blame the dungeon finder for ruining the social aspect that's the matchmaking tool that makes hard to find party members replaceable and it gives you way less reason to add people to your friends list the game will just find people for you to play with people that you will not see again so obviously not great for the social aspect but did it ruin it? Because you're probably already thinking to yourself, but wait, <laughs> we have that in Final Fantasy XIV. We have Final Fantasy XIV always had the duty finder. And yet our community went the other way, went a better way. So something else is going on, obviously. 
I think that one big factor is the devs. Most of us feel like the devs do take care of us and they're listening. Like I will never forget this live letter from December of last year where Yoshida said, let me just read this. Yoshida was like, so uh, about the 2B equipment you get from Yorha Dark Apocalypse, the 2B thighs, the ass that is. This time we made the knee portion to be transparent. Although players are happy that it's now transparent, the ass volume has been reduced from the adjustment. And I see comments in Reddit about how the ass has been nerfed. And Foxclon was sitting there saying, yeah, like the ass is nerfed or something like that. And Yoshida was like, yeah, it's gradually becoming a power word here. So I just want to explain that <laughs> we, don't, we don't actually intend to nerf it. And look, he went into extreme detail about like the polygons and the shape of the ass and how they're going to pump it up again. And it was not intended to nerf the ass. Look, that's that's my love language. And by God, they unnerfed those asses. <laughs> the point is like, I had never felt more listened to in my life. They listen to even the most silly complaints and they tell us exactly what's going on in detail. Like we feel cared for. And I think that that passion trickles down and it makes us more invested in the game and by extension, each other. There were times in a while when I got the feeling like it was kind of like every man for itself. Like I felt like the devs don't seem to give a crap about my problems. And uh, so you know, screw everybody. Like it's not hard to fall into that trap. Secondly, the equitable game design ensures that most people are not walking around with a ton of bitterness about stuff that you is just beyond your control. We have player agency and we're all playing by the same rules. There's no slot machine itemization. Your job doesn't feel like it's OP or underpowered. And, you know, every job is viable. This is an attainable goal that you can work towards and achieve. It's not RNG dependent. You know, you're, you're like, oh, okay, I just earned these boots and from killing this boss, I feel like I was rewarded for my effort, the time I spent learning how to kill this boss. And this other player, I'm not bitter about them because they'll have to get <laughs> burnt chicken pasta, I should, I should say rock to pasta from E6. They'll have to learn that fight and clear it to get these same boots, to get boots that are this good. It feels like we're all on a level playing field. And I think that fairness of the game design contributes to way less interpersonal bickering. Nobody wants to play a game that feels unfair. I mean, how do you feel now that you've lost the game? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I, I, it was a low hanging fruit, I know. Next, I think the story itself shapes the way we relate to others and perceive ourselves to a degree. It's something that helps us feel rooted in the world through our shared experiences. And part of that is due to the lack of a PTR because there's no PTR. Nobody has any idea what the story is going to be about or what, what the new turn in the plot will be until on patch day, we all go through it together. You know, or everyone who's at max level, of course. But I think that's such a powerful bonding experience that we often share. Every time there is new story coming out, we can all you know, look at each other and say, like, can you believe what just happened? And like, it's, it's very exciting for us. So I think that's something that brings us together as a community on a pretty regular basis. But more than that, the story is centered on us. We're not sideline observers. So when we do experience these plot, plot twists together on patch day, it feels much more personal. It's not like watching Thrall and Jaina save the day and saying, oh, wasn't that cool what Thrall and Jaina did? <laughs> no, instead you're saying, hey, wasn't that cool what we did? That was pretty awesome what we did. <laughs> it's kind of like the difference between sitting next to someone at a football game. You know, it's just some rando. You're not going to talk to them. You're just both watching the game or finding out that this person is good friends with your friends. You know, it's like you, this is our story. It's censored on us, not way off in the distance. And I think in an odd way, it makes us feel more connected to each other. And on top of that, we are the heroes of this story. We are the good guys. We are constantly being praised for doing the right thing and reminded that, you know, we are helpful. We are heroes. And I think by constantly being praised for that, for doing good, I think in some way it does actually motivate people to start doing good in other ways. And I want to add, especially in the case of Shadowbringers, this is a phenomenon that I have seen firsthand. 
research shows that pain brings people together. And uh, man, Shadowbringers really did bring a lot of us together. Kind of in the same way that I think that constantly being reminded that you're the hero, doing what's right is good and cool and desirable. I think that does maybe influence people's behavior a little bit in the same way. I actually think that the narrative itself is a self-fulfilling prophecy. I think that the narrative that this is a good community, we are a great community, it's repeated so often and conversely, the opposite is repeated in the WoW community. Uh, you know, in the WoW community, you often hear this community is sucks. We're very toxic. This was, you know, it's like a, it's like these are mantras that are repeated over and over and over. And I think if you if people just hear this is a good community so often, I kind of feel like it actually makes people better. Uh, it's like some weird trick. It's kind of like. I had a therapist tell me <laughs> that it's a good idea to have some like daily affirma affir affirmations affirma every day. Like you should wake up and be like, hey, I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. And gosh darn it, people like me like that SNL skin. <laughs> and it will over time actually improve your self-esteem. Or, you know, if you wake up every day and you tell yourself, I'm crappy, I'm a scum, I... I, I hate myself, you know, I, I don't deserve anything. Like these are mantras that will become self-fulfilling prophecies as well. You'll start to feel really horrible about yourself. And I kind of feel like on a macro level, this mantra of we have a great community, this is a great community, it reinforces itself. And people are like, we are excellent. I will continue to be excellent to each other. I think there's a few game specific elements that might help with alleviating a bit of toxicity too. Um, like the new player bonus, that I think that's really cool because players will get a bonus of poetics usually for helping a low level player clear content for the first time. And so this actually motivates people to be helpful and new players will have a positive experience from that in most cases. I think that's really cool. I think that the commendation system maybe to a degree, maybe a small degree, does encourage people to be more pleasant in dungeons. Maybe they're trying to get a commendation. Though, I don't know. <laughs> I was about to say, I don't know anyone that's really trying to get commendations. And then I remember at the time, once, I know this is a little off topic, but I gotta tell you, one time I was doing a dungeon and at, right at the very end of the dungeon, <laughs> the person put up a macro message that was like, D <laughs> did you enjoy this dungeon run with me today if you did please consider <laughs> giving me a commendation and i would really appreciate that thank you it was like this whole message and i was just like wow 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 really anyway <laughs> so some people really want those commendations personally i think that the commendation system would be even more effective if they could give specific types of compliments kind of like an overwatch you can be like oh what a great shot caller yes or like you were a great team player or like you were a uh, good talkative or something like that would be great i would love to have some more specific like little badges you could earn but anyways uh there's of course the very prickly issue of the dps meter there's no uh well obviously there's the parsers that people use um and it's very gray area in terms of the rules but the way that Square Enix handles it is if you use your information you got from a parser to harass another player, they will ban you or they will like they will take severe action against you for that. And there is, of course, no official add on support. So there's no DPS meter that's officially endorsed by the game. Honestly, I personally wish that we had add on support and they would just keep on punishing people that were mean about parsers. But I guess I do understand why they wouldn't want to even cross that bridge. I think that we also have a really healthy culture of learning parties in the party finder. Groups that are just like, just watch a guide, first timers welcome, it's okay. And that you go in and it's expected that there's gonna be a lot of mistakes and you're gonna be learning and that's okay. Also, I have often seen a lot of more experienced players helping out in there. But again, that's kind of pushing us more into the territory of, oh, 
look at people doing all these nice things and not quite understanding why they're doing that because you don't have any real motivation <laughs> to help people clear. I mean, to help people in a learning party where you, you have no chance of clearing at all. These are just angels. I don't know where they're coming from. That's what I'm trying to ask you. That's what I'm trying to figure out here today. Because here's the thing about accountability. You know, they, they, do, they do say in general that smaller groups will lead to greater accountability. I've noticed that if I tend to be do, doing some of the same content at the same time on specific days, I might often run into some of the same people that are also doing that same content. It's not completely like, like you're never going to see the people in Party Finder again. Duty Finder is a different story, but Party Finder is where a lot of stuff happens. And I think there's more accountability there. I think it's because the data centers in Final Fantasy XIV chop up the total population into smaller pools of people. I know that in North America, like in, in WoW, for example, or North America, uh, Party Finder is like all of North America, all of Latin America, and all Oceania. Oceania? Oh, my God. Oceania. Oceania. Uh, okay, that's right. <laughs> I think we do have more of a data center communities you know you can even now date, uh, hop to different worlds within your data center and i think because of that uh, because of world visit our data center communities have started to feel a little bit more have their own identity i guess and there's accountability within those to an to an extent still even after considering all of these different factors i can't help but wonder if there's just something about final fantasy 14 that draws a different kind of audience maybe a more thoughtful and more considerate audience that tends to be more kind more helpful I really would love your thoughts on this because I've been puzzling this over and I would love to hear other perspectives on why you think it is. Or maybe you completely disagree and you think that it's just super toxic and you can tell me about that too if you want. Um, but on that note, I really hope to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. And I want to thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, I want to encourage you to think about maybe supporting the channel on Patreon or on Twitch. You can also support the channel for free just by clicking the subscribe button or by sharing this video with your fellow warriors of darkness. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.